Do we give honor to God, the architect of this universe, who never makes a mistake in his judgment? To the great God of heaven, who is always right, even when we are wrong. To this great family. I am appreciative of your request for me to say a word. At this time, we call the eulogy. And that word eulogy, etymology speaking, it comes from eulogia which means to say a good word on behalf of the one who has passed. It's easy to say a good word on behalf of someone who has passed when you know that they knew the Lord. Some funerals I've had to make up stuff on the way. on the fly and ask God to forgive me later. So I ain't got no problem with this one tonight. Got no problem. To the angel of this house, Brother Walker, I thank you for letting me stand where you stand. to this church that I've known over 40 some odd years. Keep on praying for us. You know, John, you something else, boy. I taught you too good. He's a great young man, great preacher. And I told John, I said, now, and he'll tell you, I told him this. In your ministry, you will often experience problems simply because when you come in a room, you bring a presence. Now, ain't nobody going to miss you when you come in the room. And sometimes that can be intimidating to other people. But always do what you do. Give God the glory. Amen. To the United Course. Deborah Walker. Where you at? If, amen. Amen. If you never sing, I still have joy again. You sang it tonight. Well, you didn't sing it, you sang it tonight. Anytime, because I consider myself to be somewhat laid back. Child, when you make me stand up, said a word. So I am appreciative of that. Now, John mentioned, and, and I do agree, that this is a celebration. Am I right? Say amen when you can. And, and, and perhaps Perhaps you will not find the name Bernice Lee tomorrow on the front page of the Sun Times. Perhaps she will not be 
mentioned in the same breath as the great freedom fighters Ida B. Wells and Fannie Lou Hamer and Ella Baker. Perhaps she will not receive a postage stamp to acknowledge her contributions to our community. But I know, and I can say without fear of successful contradiction, that she was a good soldier. A sister of the struggle. And I want you to know I have sat where you sat. I've been there. Perhaps the most difficult thing in the world is to lose mama. Now we'll talk about daddy, but you know, it's, it, it, you know, it ain't easy to lose mama. Because you see, there, there's something, there's a connection. Even when you're wrong, mama going to take up for you. Now, I know that's right. But he didn't mean it that way. You just didn't understand what she was saying. So I know how hard the task is to have to deal with this tonight. But I want you to know Ain't nothing happening on earth that God doesn't know about in heaven. I wish I had a praying church here. Behind whatever happens, God has already made the decision. And I tell people all the time, I've, I've gotten to the point, I've gotten to the point, you know, I met Sister Lee a long time ago when my mother used to be a member of this church for years. And then Brother Harper, every year for over 20 years, I would come here to hold a gospel meeting every year. Then under the ministry of Brother Dean. So had a chance to, to know her. And there's some things, let me preface this tonight. I'm not going to be long. Let me preface this by saying some stuff I don't want to know. Some stuff I don't need to know. Some things I will never know. But there's one thing I do know. And that is God will take care of his own. In the midnight hour. And I ain't talking about at 12 o'clock at night. Some midnights come at 2 in the afternoon. Amen, somebody. In the midnight hour. When nobody seems to understand this situation. Because you know what? You never get over this. Now, anybody that tells you they've gotten over the passing of mama, they lied. But God helps you to deal with the circumstance. Put strength in your shoulders. And that's what I want to talk about for just a few minutes this evening. I want to call your attention to Isaiah chapter 40. And I want us to underscore verse number 31. Isaiah 40. Verse 31. Matter of fact, 
it would be good to start at verse 29, but in the interest of time, I want you to remember this tonight. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Three stages of life are right here in this one verse. I want to talk with you for just a few minutes about strength for the struggle. Y'all going to help me? I know this is a funeral, but you can say amen. amen. God don't mind. There was, I thought, I thought, and I'm confessing tonight, there was a time when I thought I fully understood the context of this verse. Yeah. There was a time when as a student of the scripture, I had performed all of the critical exegesis and explored the Hebrew idiom and I had researched the necessary hermeneutics and I thought I had a firm grip concerning the meaning of this marvelous passage. But the older I have become, in both age and grace, the more I appreciate the expansiveness and the inexhaustible nature of the word of God. You see, it's one thing to be smart. It's another to be wise. And you have two choices. You can be wise or Otherwise, <laughs> and as I've gotten older, not only in age, but in preaching, mm -hmm. the business of living, just getting up every morning, it lets me know that there are still some hills and valleys and there are some rivers and streams. There are some ravines of revelatory insight that these eyes of mine have yet to behold. Because for me, like most of us who are here tonight, who have dealt with the passing of a loved one, these words of Isaiah, gives us strength in times of our struggles. They give us encouragement in times of discouragement. When it seems as if all hope has gone on a holiday, when it appears that your wagon has broken down and ain't no repairman in sight, when the burdens of life wax heavy upon your shoulders and there is nowhere to turn, no one you can pick up the phone and call, we find ourselves reaching for these sacred lines and we say to ourselves, if we know the Lord, they that wait upon the Lord shall not might be, not maybe, not perhaps, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This one verse, and I don't have time to deal with two or three, this one verse, gives us grace 
It's a statement of grace in the hour of grief. It's a semblance of fact which gives us hope in the hour of conflict and crisis. When our strength has become sapped and our determination becomes depleted, we can find comfort and consolation in this prophetic pronouncement. Yeah, yeah, you see, you see, what I like about this verse, and I'm going to tell you because I want everybody to hear this. When you study these verses from a poetic translation or interpretation, Isaiah seems to be saying that if you learn how to wait upon the Lord in your youth, you will mount up with wings as eagles. If you learn how to wait upon the Lord in your middle age, you will run and not get weary. And if you learn to wait upon the Lord when you get old, you will walk and you shall not faint. And what, what, what souls need, what you need, what I need in times like these, we don't need a whole lot of words. We need renewal of strength. Somebody, and I'm quoting somebody, I didn't make it up, but somebody once said that all of us are enrolled in the university of adversity. And can't nobody cut class. Stephen Olford, one of my favorite writers, uh, he said that every man, and that's gender neutral, every man uh, that lives is either in trouble Headed for trouble or just got out of trouble. Therefore, whenever we can find a real reliable source of strength when we're dealing with circumstances such as this, we are able to face whatever the challenge might be. Now, this word renew, y'all got a minute? This word renew, it, it, in the Hebrew language, it means to exchange. And the words mount up have reference to ascending and rising above. So what the text is really saying is that, John, if you wait upon the Lord... When trouble comes, you'll be able to exchange all of your tears for all of God's triumph. If you wait upon the Lord, when you're pounded by pressure and hounded by hardships, you'll be able to exchange all of your miseries for all of his mercy. If you wait upon the Lord, when your faith is faltering and your midnight appears, you can exchange all of your weakness for all of God's strength, all of your darkness for all of God's light, all of your agonies for all of God's answers, and all of your penalties for all of God's pardon. God will give you surging power, soaring power, to rise above even a death situation. Haven't you ever noticed? Watch this. You will never find an eagle flying with pigeons. Oh, ma'am, no, sir. No, 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 no. Dogs and cats run in packs, but eagles fly alone. And when storms come, that eagle will spread them wings and rise above the storm until the crisis is over. Because remember, God's ways are traceless, trackless, and timeless. God is on a different thought level. He's on a different technique level. He's on a different time level than we are on. God don't see stuff like we see stuff. So we who know the Lord don't have to worry about no tomorrow. 
You know, I got share folk all the time on the news at night. They're all upset about Trump. I ain't worried about Trump. I got a Trump in God. And he can out-Trump any Trump in Washington, D.C. Ain't worried about no Trump. Because when God gets ready to pull that road, that rug from underneath him, it, it, it's going to be all right. Sometimes, as I said initially, even the angel of death can cause us to take another look at our relationship with God, our creator. The Bible is right. Man that is born of a woman ain't but a few days. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He cometh up and he cut down like a flower. And whether we admit it or not, and I'm learning this all the time, just, just from this time last year up until today, we've lost nine preachers. Nine preachers. I thank God my name wasn't on the list. <laughs> Seems like almost every day people we have known are falling away. The marks of time are in all of us. The mist of Jordan has begun to spray wet in all of our faces. The indispositions of weaknesses of the flesh are in all of us. What that mean? It means you getting old. And I'm getting old. I know I'm getting old because I don't run like I used to. And I go in a room two or three times. Well, now I went in here for something. I know... I know, what did I come in here for? Time is catching up with all of us. And you hear folk, they talking to you, say, what you say? Huh? What the? Time is catching up with all of us. Who can say anything to us? When we've lost a grandmother, a mother, an aunt, Someone who was dear, I hear, and I heard Sister Banks, she said it before, she and Bernice were just like that. And that's true. Frank and Jesse James. <laughs> Amen. Because if you mess with one, you mess with the other one. Now, now I know that's right. And you better not say nothing negative in the earshot about Bernice in the earshot of Sister Banks. And vice versa. Because if you say something negative about Sister Banks in the presence of Sister Lee, you get that cane. <laughs> but it's times like these that we need to hear the words of Isaiah. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. These are times, Lee family, and all of you that are here. Sister Gibson talked about uh, Spalding. I understand, because I'm from East Garfield too. <laughs> Praise the mighty name of Jesus. And, 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 and you, back there in the city, you better know the Lord. But you need to hear Jesus say, I am the resurrection and the life. You need to hear Jesus say, I am death's death and the healer for sorrow's sake. You need to hear Jesus say that in my father's house, there are many mentions and many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you whatever you need to make an exit from your extremity, God's power will provide. Hello, somebody. I still got joy. Whatever you need to lighten your load, his power will provide. And he'll see you through. Now, as I close, as I close, 
I quoted this when the family was coming in. Psalm 27. Most of us remember the sweet singer for Psalms 23. And we've been taught the Lord is my shepherd from the University of Mother's Knee. But when you flip over a few chapters, you find a man who has been through some stuff. Amen. And I know we recognize David and he, he's, he's uh, you know, one of the prominent uh, king. Matter of fact, he was, he was the, uh, a prominent king under, under Israel, over Israel. A mighty warrior. But David had problems. Help me somebody. His own son tried to kill him. And David wouldn't retaliate told his army, he says, he says, leave the young man alone. I know he, he wants to kill me, take my life, but that's my child. Amen. And David said in Psalm 27, wait on the Lord. You got that? Wait on the Lord. You ain't got to look it up. I'm telling you what it says. Wait on the Lord. Be of good cheer. And he will strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. This word wait in Psalm 27 and Isaiah 40, 31, it is not static. What that means? He's not saying stand there and don't do nothing. That ain't what he's saying. When he says wait on the Lord, he's talking about serve the Lord. Every time I go in a restaurant and I sit down, I want somebody to wait on me. And if they wait on me right, they got a good tip coming. When you wait on God right, he'll give you a good tip. He'll tell you to fret not yourself because of evil doers. No. Be thy envious over the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like grass and wither as the green herb. He'll tell you, I have been young and now I'm old, but I've never seen God forsake the righteous nor his seed begging bread. He'll tell you, they that die in the Lord shall live again. Oh, he got a good tip for you. If you wait on him right. And as I hasten to my conclusion, you know, even Jesus needed to be picked up. He needed his father to give him a tip. Yeah, yeah. You see, you see, he was born in another man's world. And he walked down another man's streets. He died for another man's sins. He was buried in another man's grave. They walked him and whipped him from a courtyard to Calvary. And out there on a hill of horror, beneath a blackened sky, in the midst of mean, mad men, they knocked him down and crucified the Savior of the world. But I tell you, God gave him a tip because God picked him up between the golden splendor of a Sunday sunrise. And 40 days later, he ascended back on high. He went back to glory and sat on the right hand of God. And he's there interceding for you and you and you and you and you and me and you. Now, this is my third conclusion. <laughs> See, sometimes people that mean a lot to you, you ain't got to say a whole lot. All of life is a diminishing business. Time. I said before, has its way of scoring its ugly marks in our souls. Time diminishes us. 
It reduces us. Time disgraces us. When all of the spreading of the mascara is over and the splashing of the cologne has ceased, time is going to catch up with you. Time will take away the bright beauty of youth, won't it do it? Leave us weak, worn, wounded, and wrinkled. But if you're going to face the struggles of life, that include the passing of mama, grandmama, friend, cousin, church mother, encourager. If you're going to deal with it spiritually, you got to look to the hills from whence cometh your help. And know that all of your help comes from the Lord. So cheer up, my brother. Look up, my sister. Rejoice in your sadness. Be encouraged in your gladness. Be filled with hope at the end of your road. Because my God, he stoops and he scoops. He stoops and he scoops. He stoops and scoops us from whatever sorrow we find ourselves in. In Jesus, only in Jesus, we shall rise up above every foe. Every pain, every tear, every sorrow. And one day we shall all march through the floods and flames, through sickness and sorrow, until the great victory banquet of the Lamb. We're going to come up from every side, from the north, from the south, from the east and the west, carrying our crosses and nursing our wounds and healing our hurts because they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Sleep on, my sister. You live the good life. I read somewhere that you raise 15 kids. 18. My Lord, the numbers keep going up. You got to be a strong woman. Amen. I ain't got but two. And I'm done. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. 18 kids? That's traumatic in itself. My God, eight. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. May God keep you in the providence of his care. God bless you, Lee family. Stay strong, my son. I know the faith is in you because I know where you got it from, your mama and your grandmama. Amen. All right. May God continue to keep you in his care.